Hey there, my name is Lieutenant Sanchez, the commanding officer here at Coast Guard Station Safe Water. That means I'm in charge of all the boats and the other Coast Guard people here, kind of like your teacher is in charge of the classroom. I'm so glad you stopped by today because my crew and I wanted to show you around and teach you guys how to be safe when you're around the water. Like always wear a life jacket when you're on a boat? That's right, Glenn. Every time you get on a hey. boat or a jet ski Hi. or canoe, you should be wearing a life jacket. Do you know why? So you'll float if you fall in the water. <laughs> right again. And sometimes, you might even have to remind your mom and dad to put their life jackets on too. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, little or big, or how good you can swim. Everyone, even people in the Coast Guard, need to wear a life jacket. Sometimes boats and canoes tip over accidentally or sink. And if that happens, you want to be ready. Having life jackets in the boat isn't enough. Would you reach your seatbelt when your car's about to crash? No. You need to wear it for it to save you. The Coast Guard's motto is always ready. Semper paratus. A motto is like a little sentence that tells people what you care about the most. For us, we always have to be ready to help people in trouble. Those people have a flag on their boat? You see, Nikki, you hold up those bright orange or red flags so other people in boats know that someone is in the water near your boat. Maybe they're swimming or just had a major wipeout. That way, other boaters can slow down and be more careful if they come close to you. Oh, that makes sense. It's like warning flag telling other people, be careful, I'm playing in the water. That's right, Nikki. And when you're playing in the water, Never pretend you're in trouble and yell for help or say you're drowning. But what if I'm just playing with friends and I don't yell it very loud? Helping people who are in trouble in the water is one of a bunch of things the Coast Guard does. And we take it very seriously. One of the worst things someone can do is pretend to be in trouble. A lot of times, kids and teenagers like to pretend they are in trouble using the radio on the boat. That's a really bad thing to do. Because if the Coast Guard thinks you're in trouble, We'll send people to come and look for you. And if we are gone looking for you and you are in trouble, who is going to help the people that are in trouble? No one, I guess. So remember, never pretend you need help in the water or on the radio. Maybe just leave talking on the radio to the adults. Well, that is unless an adult is in real trouble and needs your help. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So did you guys enjoy the boat ride? Yeah. yeah! And did you learn anything? Always wear a life jacket when you're on a boat. Wave a bright orange or red flag to tell other people you just wiped out. <laughs> or people are in the water near your boat. And don't yell that you need help if you're really just pretending. And? Never, ever, ever play on the radio. It's like calling 911. And you never call 911 unless somebody is in trouble. That's very good, kids. Also, remember that the motors on a boat can be very dangerous and hurt you a lot. So leave working on the motor to the adults, too. So, who wants to go to the kitchen and get some ice cream before we go to the beach? Yeah! yeah. You kids almost done with your ice cream? Almost! What are you doing, Glenn? We don't litter. We need to keep our beaches clean. Trash on the beach can go in the water. And once it's in the water, it can hurt the animals and the fish that call the ocean their home. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize it could hurt the fishies. Woo. That's okay, Glenn. Now you know how bad it is. Chief Brown, could you teach the kids about beach safety? 
Sure thing, sir. Chief Brown, I'm going to help make sure no one hurts the fishies and pick up all the trash on the beach. Hold on a minute, Nikki. I really like that you want to help the fishies. I, I, I mean the, the fish. But picking up the trash on the beach might not be the safest idea. What do you mean, Chief? The garbage you pick up might be covered in icky chemicals or be sharp enough to cut your hands. Maybe you could get your school or church to organize a beach cleanup day. Your parents could also help find a local community group that does activities to help protect our environment. They can teach you what kind of stuff not to touch and also make sure you have gloves and clothing that can protect you. That sounds cool. Could I do that too? Everyone can help keep the environment clean. We just want you to be safe when you do it. What's an environment? He said environment. It means the earth, the air, the beach, and the water. Oh, I like the environment. Another thing you should never touch on the beach is a hurt animal. Sometimes, oil is spilled in the water and gets on birds and animals, like uh, otters or turtles or pelicans, seagulls, seals, walruses, sea lions. Uh, manta rays, hermit crabs, giant squid and mermaids. If you see an animal with oil on it, never touch it. The animals are already scared and might be sick. Just have an adult call your local wildlife expert. But I'd want to help the animal if it was hurt. I know, Nikki. And the best way to do that is to have an adult call an expert. They can make sure the animal gets clean and gets the right medicine. Okay. Hey, Chief, it sure is hot out here. Woo! Sure is. Have you been drinking enough water? I had a soda on the car ride. Well, when you're going to the beach on a hot day, you want to make sure you drink plenty of fluids, like water or juice. That helps your body. If you don't drink enough water, too much sun can make you feel sick. You also want to wear sunscreen or sunblock so you don't get a sunburn. But I hate when my mom puts that gunk on me. Well, Glenn, she does it because she knows a sunburn hurts and isn't good for your skin. Oh, fine. Playing at the beach is fun. Oh, Nikki, that's not a good idea. When logs wash up on the beach, they're called driftwood. The water makes them soft, making it dangerous to walk on because your foot could break through the wood. The logs aren't very stable, either. That means the driftwood could move or roll when you're on top and throw you down. That would hurt. And getting hurt isn't fun at all. You also don't want to climb on big rocks because they can move when you're on them. But I'm not very big. Am I heavy enough to make a big rock move? Uh, you could be. And we don't want to find out. Cliffs along the beach are dangerous too. So be safe and just enjoy the sandy beach. Well, now that you kids know about beach safety, who wants to swim? We do! We do! We do! All right, guys. Now that we know how to be safe on a boat and we're playing on the beach, let's talk about something very, very important. Being safe when you're swimming. Well, what else is there to know? I've gone swimming before. Well, Glenn. There's some important things that maybe you haven't thought about before. Like you should never go swimming by yourself. Always have a swimming buddy. When your class goes on field trips, does your teacher assign you a buddy? Yeah. Well, it's just like that. You also want to make sure you're swimming in a safe area. Sometimes they're marked by little buoys floating in the water or by signs on the beach. And if the water is deeper than your chest, you want to make sure you wear a life jacket. Sometimes a lifeguard will test you to make sure you can swim really good before they let you go out. And if there's not a lifeguard, test yourself. See how long you can tread water without touching the ground. Maybe ask your parents to sign you up for uh, swimming classes. My mom and dad signed me up for swim class last year. It was really fun, and now I'm a good swimmer. Well, that's awesome. But be careful. Just because you're a good swimmer doesn't mean you can't get into trouble in the water. There are other things besides how well you can swim that can make it dangerous. Like what? Do you kids know what a rip current is? No? no. Chief? A rip current or rip tide is when the water pulls you away from the beach. 
They are very dangerous. A rip current can happen in the ocean and in large lakes. It feels like no matter how fast you swim, the beach keeps moving farther away. So be careful. Does it pull you underwater? No, Nikki. It only pulls you away from the beach. If you think you're in a rip current, stay calm. And don't try to swim straight back to shore. Instead, swim along the beach until you don't feel the water pulling you. Then it's safe to swim to the beach. Rip currents usually aren't very big, but they can be strong. And if you start getting tired, then it's time to call for help. Don't worry. If I get caught in a rip current, I'll call for help. But rip currents aren't the only thing the kids need to know, sir. That's right, Chief. You should also never dive headfirst in water if you don't know how deep it is. You don't want to bonk your head. Yep. And you don't want to swim near floating trees and sticks. And you especially don't want to swim near plants called lily pads or tall seaweed because it can accidentally get wrapped around your legs and make it hard to swim. And remember, no pretending you're in trouble, right? Right. Because right. when you come to help us, you won't be able to help people in real trouble. That's right. And if you ever see somebody in trouble, tell a lifeguard so right good. away or help an adult call 911. I could help save people like you guys. <laughs> Oh, you sure could. Well, kids, you got to take a boat ride, learn to be safer in the water, and go swimming today. Have fun? Yeah! yeah! Hey, we had a lot of fun today showing you around, too. And next time we're going... About a sinking, about a sinking, about a sinking, about a sinking. Sounds like someone needs our help, Chief. Petty Officer Haley, ready the boat crew. Aye, aye, Chief. 